but how did you uh had the confidence that you know i can help other people um do the same thing well you know um i first started out as a life coach and moved into relationship coaching but i went through a lot of training and I did a lot of volunteering with couples and with people and helping them with, them with their relationships for free. I did a lot of that to build who I am, what I am, what I can offer. Um, I, I did my time, so to speak. You know, I really availed myself of training, of having a support team that helped me um, incredibly with, with doing this. I was... Welcome to another episode of the Love Can't Wait podcast. My name is Sharp King, so like and share this episode. So today, I have another special guest. However, before I get into that, like, subscribe, and leave me a five-star review in iTunes. Love it or hate it. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear your feedback and any topics, anything you want me to talk about, send me email, any email you would like, any topics at renegademoney at gmail.com. That's renegademoney at gmail.com. That's where you send your emails. So with that being said, today... I have another special guest and she helps couples reignite their relationships, bring their relationships back to life. So if your relationship is dead as a doorknob or y'all lost connection and you want to reinvent, reignite, bring the spark back, this is episode for you. She's a master relationship coach. She's a Wall Street best-selling offer, Amazon best-selling offer, and a Barnes and Noble best-selling offer. And she has a brand new book out called Get Out of the Box and Into Play, The Secret to a Lasting Relationship. My special guest today is Carrie. Welcome to the show. So where are you from? Uh, Originally, I'm from Indiana, but right now I live in Texas and I love it here. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. So so how'd you get into the the relationship uh, coaching and... uh, Give, giving advice and uh you know because this is not something that most of us you know we don't this is not the ideal uh job or career or whatever you know this is not something that we we dreamed about growing up most of us <laughs> so, so, how, so how'd you get started oh my goodness well you know i had a whole life of um i had a lot of abuse in my life and I'm uh, naturally an introvert and I paid a lot of attention to people and what they do and how the relationships were the whole time I was growing up. I sat quietly and watched and uh, became like really interested in helping people to communicate better and to find more joy and more happiness. I saw a lot of um, pain and misery around me. And so I, I knew that there was a way and I needed to find that way. And um, I, I, I didn't think about coaching until after I left my first relationship. Um, I was in a marriage for 27 years. Um, We, the whole relationship was 30 years. We were high school uh, sweethearts. And um, when I left that relationship, you know, there was a, there was a lot of uh, emotional and psychological abuse going on there. So I went to therapy and I got help 
and learn that, you know, I, I'm a really loving person and I love to help people love each other. Um, so coaching, after I got through with that therapy, coaching presented an opportunity to me to, to do that and to help other couples to um, have better relationships, listen better, be close to each other, um, discover what real intimacy is. You know, so many times people think that intimacy is sex, but you know, that happens. But intimacy is really about connecting to each other on a physical and emotional level, both. So um, I became fascinated with helping couples. And so, you know, somebody's got to do that. A lot of people don't want to do that, but I am absolutely amazed by relationships. They're just as individual as each of us are. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Um, I, I always tell people I never wanted to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never, I never wanted to do this. You know, there's people that that known me since that that I grew up with, and I grew up very mm-hmm. shy. And, and there's people that see me today, and they're like, they can't believe that I'm doing something like this. I'm giving advice. They're like, oh my goodness, as shy as he was growing up as a kid. Mm. So. But I do agree with you. Um, I'm kind of fascinated by the, the dynamics of relationships between males and females and the different types of females and the different types of males and the yeah. different mindsets and how people grew up, grew up and how they how different people connect. And they might be from a different uh, country. And, you know, and it's it's interesting how people connect and how people don't connect. Sometimes a lot of that stuff I grew to like it, you know? Right. You know, I I have a saying from my grandmother. Um, She was very, very close to me. She was my my love connection in my life. And um, she said, Kara Jane, you don't need to worry about people who are loud and boisterous and tell all about themselves. She said, the wise ones are the quiet ones. You know, those are the ones that are paying attention. And those are the ones that have the value behind them. And and I'm really grateful to her for lifting me up that way. But I find that so true. You know, um, I'm married to someone who is very extroverted and boisterous. And and I know what he's thinking at every moment. Um, and he's, he's an incredible balance to me because I'm really introverted and quiet and pay attention to my world and everything that's going on in my world in a quiet way so yeah and and the funny thing about that people will say well if you're introverted how do you do videos how do you do interviews (laughs) how do you get on stage and and speak Mm -hmm. people will say that doesn't make any sense Well, that's because people have an idea of what an introvert is. You know, they uh, they see an introvert as somebody who is unable to take care of themselves, who's shy, withdrawn, can't um, live their lives and do the things they want to do. Yes, I had to overcome my fear of standing up in front of people and speaking. Um, I had to overcome being on a podcast or you know, recently, even still, I'm growing in my life. Recently, doing reels on Facebook, I'm like, no, no, no. And then I had to yeah. to overcome that and do that. Um, what introverts introverts are not super necessarily super shy people. It's yeah. that it's that what I explain to people is that we require more time after that. So yes, I can stand on stage in front of thousands of people and I can give a speech. After that happens, I have to take care of me and my spiritual wellness and be calm and quiet for a while. I cannot um, go to another speech right away. I need downtime. And um, that that's part of being introverted and there's but that doesn't stop me from doing anything I want to do in my life. Yeah, same here. You know, I, um, I'm like, I like 
you know, doing videos and, and speaking in front of people and being around people all the time, but it wears me out. <laughs> you know, even though it's fun, it still wears me out, you know. So, but I can, a lot of that, my shyness, that has to do a lot with how I grew up, you know. Mm. And Reverend, my, my mom used to always say, hey, don't, don't say that. You know, don't do that. And, you know, whether she knew it or not, you know, in her mind, she was trying to, I guess, uh, save me in a sense, or, you know, just, uh, you know, have people think uh, differently of me as a kid or whatever. Mm. But it didn't help me. It, it hindered me because when it, when it was time for me to, you know, like speak my mind or, or do a video or give advice, I had to fight through that, you know? So that's where a lot of that stems from, from when I was growing up as a kid. Well, yeah, and, and I, talk of, I, I talk about that a lot with my clients, and that is about that belief system, that, 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 that thing that happened to you when you were a kid doesn't have to be trauma. No, it, it, it doesn't at all have to be trauma. And believe me, you know, there are no perfect parents because there are no perfect children. We are all individual human beings. And so there's no judgment. But I try to get couples to look at their individual beliefs. What did you believe? What were you told? What how were you trained by home, uh, school? church all of those things growing up all of the information that you gathered to decide um who you are what you are what you believe all of those things um that's it's really important there is not a judgment on a parent you know and, and it's just it was you know don't touch this don't say this don't do this we had a lot of don'ts when we were kids not a whole lot of do's you know <laughs> yeah, a lot of don'ts yeah. and um so but there's not a judgment on parents you know i gave my own don'ts to my kids too so you know it, it, you just do as you the best you can the very best you can do yeah. um but because of those don'ts that i experienced and those don'ts that happened in my life um, I became fearful of speaking up. I became fearful of being me. I became fearful of expressing myself. I became fearful of the whole world. And um, I also thought that um, my belief system was that if, if I just keep doing for people all the time, they will like me and became a people pleaser you know i'll volunteer for this i'll volunteer for that and doing you know everything i can do you know it took me a very long time to get to the point where i don't have to give you my right arm anymore i can give you a little bit of my time i can give you my love i can give you some of my energy but my right arm is going to stay right where it belongs you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can relate to that being a people pleaser. Cause it's like, um, mm -hmm. I've met people and initially when I met them, I liked them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, I wanted to be friends with them, but I realized that they didn't feel the same about me. So I said, uh, over time I said, you know, I said, no, it's, they just not into me like that. And that's okay. <laughs> but I had a I had a hard time with that. You know, wrapping my mind around that after I don't know, like a few times. <laughs> well, because of because of the the stuff that I grew up in, um I I had an abusive background and a and a religious background that no no diss on any religion. But I had a religious background that told me that my job was to do for others and not think of me. Yeah. And so I thought that I was doing the right thing, but I learned later that I'm a precious child of God. 
and that God does not want me to be subservient to anyone except yeah. him. So, you know, not to, sorry if I'm bringing in things for religion, but, but I learned better in my life that um, I'm not to give away everything that I am for the sake of someone else. That's not my job. That's God's job. Yeah. And, right. I, and I realized that everybody's just not for everybody. No. <laughs> and, that, that, and, that's, and that's just how it is. <laughs> well, yeah. When, when I look at my life, like I'm learning lessons and I'm learning about other people and learning how they do things. You know, I'm, I'm learning it, it. Not everyone is supposed to be in my path. Yeah. You know, there are lessons that I'm learning and there are things that I need to grow. However, some of those people who, who come into my path are there for just a moment, just a breath, you know, not, not just a little bit. And that's the, all that they were meant to be. That is the only path that they were meant to cross. They have their own way. I have my own way. And not everybody has to like me. And I, here was the kick for me when I got older was I don't have to like everybody else either. Yep. I, I, I love you because you are a special child of God, but I don't have to like you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So how did you had the confidence to be able to help other people? with their relationships you know because it's one thing you know you mm -hmm. had uh you grew up the way you grew up and you learned mm -hmm. better and you did better but how did you uh had the confidence that you know i can help other people um do the same thing well you know um i first started out as a life coach and moved into relationship coaching but i went through a lot of training and I did a lot of volunteering with couples and with people and helping them them with their relationships for free. I did a lot of that to build who I am, what I am, what I can offer. Um, I, I did my time, so to speak. You know, I really availed myself of training, of having a support team that helped me um, incredibly with with doing this I was really fortunate really blessed to have um, uh, psychologists who are willing to take me on and let me help people so uh, you know with all that training then I struck out on my own and um, it's been a blast it has it's just been so much joy oh okay no, because I've seen you, uh, I've seen you get interviews on like uh, some of the big networks, and I've seen pictures of you on yes. stage. And, um, you know, I, when I listen, I listen to a lot of stuff you said, I could tell that it's been a, it's been a, a, a fun journey, you know, for you, I, I could tell, you know. Mm hmm. Well, it was a hard road to get there, yeah. you know? Um, and, and I really, truly believe that absolutely everything that I've been through in my life has led me to where I am today so that um, all those experiences allow me to connect to every kind of people and help every kind of people. Okay. So how, how'd you get involved with the uh, veterans, military? How, how'd, that, how'd that come about? Well, I was a military wife. Okay. <laughs> and I'm really super supportive of military families. Um, they don't receive all the support that most people do. Um, being in a military family is an institution. Yeah. Um, it really is. You know, I lived the life of going to church um, on the installation, going to the grocery store, commissary, going to the PX, um, the gas station, um, everything that I could possibly want was within my community. And with the exception of stepping outside of the installation to go to Walmart, and I know it 
probably shouldn't say the name of a company, but but the, the truth is to step outside of the installation to go to like one or two stores, I lived my life in that closed community and I was pretty institutionalized. I mean, really, it, it, it is a, a completely different life that, that most civilians don't understand, which I do. I mean, my whole, pretty much all of my adult life was um, in, as a military. Um, they don't get what we on the outside get. They don't have the support. They don't have the same, um, things and you know when when there's abuse that's going on in a military family um, there's a shutdown because the families are terrified that their husband's careers or wives careers will end if there's any kind of uh, need for help in the family and it's still that way yep. um, there are many abused women uh, who are uh, spouses of active duty military who will never ever say anything because the support system is just not there um, I one time said one thing and that one comment uh, led to my active duty soldier husband being called on the carpet by his commander and being told to control his wife yeah. so yeah so it's just not there. The support isn't there, and and I'm never gonna I'm never gonna not talk about it. I'm never gonna not lie or lie about it. I'm never gonna I'm gonna keep saying what I gotta say because it it is there, and and it is one of the reasons why the divorce rate is over seventy percent with military families. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um. I. You know. I'm. I'm. I, I was. I used to be in the navy. I actually saw I saw a lot of uh, abuse and in, uh, in in the Navy and um, the first time I saw it, you know, I'm like, what? I'm 20 years old. I don't I don't know what to do. I don't right. know because I'm coming from a small town in South Carolina. I never seen nothing like that before. So mm -hmm. uh, I think the it was another guy that was with me at the time. He was like, hey, you you you. You going in there? I'm not going in there. I don't know. <laughs> you well, know? yeah, you're still young. Yeah, you know what do you what do you know about helping people with domestic problems? You, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. You know, and, and you're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah, and in, in the chain of command, a lot of times they kind of want to keep it on the keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. And then you have some commanders that just don't want to have nothing to do with it. No, no, you know, it's it's very hush hush. And let me let me tell you that for the active duty soldier, the life in the military is extreme high stress. Oh yeah. It's extreme stress. Um, and a lot of people don't understand, you know, hey, no. uh, we're going to yank you into a war zone for six months, one year, 18 months and be away from your family, your loved ones, your country, your friends. And then we're going to bring you back home and expect you to behave normally. <laughs> Never Which happen. doesn't happen. I mean, there's, a, there's, a, of course, there's a lot. Uh, I love my soldiers. I really do. I love my military family. So I'm not sitting here and saying that that it's all bad or anything. No. But my mission is to help those families to better communicate, to seek out the the um, the resources that they can find. Um, and my unique experience is that I ran a deployment center for six years. Oh man. So, I know what the soldiers look like when they went out and I know what they look like when they came back in. I had, you cannot even imagine how many wives came to me and brought me their, their, their husbands with traumatic brain injury and telling me this is not my husband. He, uh, th he needs help. And of course he needed help. And it was my job to go and find those resources and get help for those soldiers. It was my job to do that. Um, 
Did I do it? No, but I would go to the wall trying to find those resources for those soldiers. You know, it, it's, um, you know, you're, you're say I was sitting in Germany. So those resources were not the same as there's no VA in Germany. You know, they have to go home to get to the VA. Yeah. They had to go back to the States. These soldiers needed help right now. And, and that was my job to go get them help. Yeah. And, yeah. and I burn out. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I, I was working 80, 80 hours a week on average. And I did that for six years and said, okay, I got to help a different way. <laughs> yeah. Cause, and, and, and what makes matters even worse mm-hmm. when you get out, they'd be like, Hey buddy, post you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I I do say that that the military I don't know about the navy I just know about the army and uh, the army does try to help soldiers with transition into civilian life, but there, there's just no transitioning for me. Um, there you can, you know how you can just tell a person something over and over again. You can tell them things, but there's nothing that substitutes for life experience. No. Um, my life in the military was over. How did I make friends and connect with people? What was your last duty station? <laughs> so, yeah. Like, hey, where have you been? And we could start talking about where we live. You get out in the civilian world and they look at you like you gotta, you know, carry it. doesn't work. Your head, you know? I, I, it's like, I don't, oh. I don't. I've tried uh, <laughs> talking to people that's never been in the military. I, I don't do it no more. I just talk to the people that are veterans or people that still act. That's it. You know? Well, I, mean, I don't. I, I talk to everybody now. I did successfully trans- transition from military life into civilian life. I did do that. I can carry on conversations with people yeah. while asking them where their last duty station is. I... I and I, but I've been out of that since 2011. So it took it took a while to, no offense, but deprogram. Yeah. You know, I I'm, I don't go to the commissary or the PX or I don't have anything to do with the military at all. I go to the grocery store. I go to places and organizations where there it's civilian life. And the further I am away from it, the further I get myself into the civilian world. You know, if I if I stayed in it, and, and I saw people when we were when uh, my ex husband was active duty, I saw that uh, there were people who still stayed there, went to who were retired and went to church there, who oh, yeah. lived their lives still there, you know? And and I thought, this I do not want in my life. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know I know people that still, you know, they still stay around the bases or still stay on the bases. They still connect. Mm-hmm. But I found for me, the further I get away from it, I still keep meeting veterans. I still keep meeting them because a lot of veterans don't say they veterans mm-hmm. until you get to know them. And I asked right. one guy, well, I asked two or three guys and a woman too. Hey, how come you didn't tell me that in the beginning? They said, because a lot of people don't like it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I think all of us, uh, I don't out there are surprised when we find out how many people have served you know um there's he puts a hat on and says i went to vietnam or i served in army navy air force marines coast guard not everybody wears a hat or wears a t-shirt to identify that you know there's not each time I see it, I thank the person for their service. But, you know, not everybody goes around announcing to other people that they did time in service. I think I think most people would be surprised how many people have served. Yeah, yeah. So, 
So what made you write a book? What made me write a book was my love for for relationships and relationship coaching. And I, I wanted something. I noticed that there were books out there that were uh, 365 pages. And there was this like information, 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 information about what you can do to change your entire life and your entire relationship. And I know that they were, those books were sitting on the coffee table and those couples were not even looking at it. And I wanted to create something with simple changes that couples could make, you know, address their belief system, talk to them about values and give them simple solutions to their, their simple problems. You know, we as human beings, if you ask us to change everything about ourselves, and you look, look at all these fad diets, you know, how long you last? <laughs> no. <laughs> Some people don't make it a month. You know, don't what is the point? Going. We are as human beings, change is slow yeah. and simple. And if you want to make changes in your life, do little simple things. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So I wanted to create a book so that couples could do little simple things to change their relationship. Simple things they could learn to communicate together. It's a whopping 108 pages. You can read it on a Saturday afternoon and you can still go back to it and, and, and take those simple things or answer those simple questions with each other and have the discussions. Plus part of the book is teaching them to be kids and have fun together. You know, there's a, I don't know about you, but I grew up being told, grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up, stop playing, stop playing, stop playing. You know, and I'm telling them, no, no, you need to play. You want to be closer. You want to have intimacy. Y'all need to be playing, you know, go get the squirt guns, go and have a water gun fight with each other, squirt gun fight with each other. Play like your kids. You build memories. You create something special when you do that. Yeah, I think a lot of times as we get older or we become adults, people start to get too serious. Everything has to yeah. be serious all the time. I'm like, look, it's a time to loosen up. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, um, and I had to learn to get in touch with that little girl in me that, that could have fun and play. Um, yeah. it, you know, my husband gets frustrated. We both work from home and my husband gets frustrated sometimes with his work and he'll come out and he'll be out full, you know, angry face. And I'm like, you got a problem? And he's like, yes. You know, and he's really mad about something. Yeah. And and instead of sitting there going, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. You want me to listen to you? Da, 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 da. My little girl comes out and says, you want me to punch him in the face? <laughs> Just cracks up. He starts laughing. I'm not going to punch anybody in the face. No. You know, but the, the deal is, is that it just breaks it for him and, nice. and, he, and he finds joy and laughter and goes on that's what we do for each other as couples you know that's yeah. what couples need to do for each other there's no such thing as 50 50 in a relationship oh, no. there are times when i'm at 20 percent and i'm not liking you and i don't want to talk to you yeah. and there, <laughs> there are times when my husband's at 20% and he's like, I don't want, I, mm -mm, I got to go do something else. I got to do something. I don't want to talk to you right now. You know, we it, balance in a relationship is when the other person's not doing so hot, you're there for them. Yeah. You know, uh, or you leave them alone, you know, give them their, their space, their time, what they, what they need. And, and then be there when they're ready to come back, you know? So sometimes it's 2080. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think we're in a um, time now where this is the, uh, everything you want, people, a lot of people want things super fast. We're in a, we're in a microwave society where, you know, um, everyone's on the clock. He's like, hey, everything has to be, done at a certain point or in a certain phase and if mm -hmm. i'm not 
And if I'm not seeing what I think I'm supposed to be seeing, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I, I am absolutely here to preach to to the world, to tell the world that that if you want a relationship to last, you got to work. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. oh, yeah. Bottom line, you got to work on your relationship. And, and if you're not feeling the pain of growth, you that ain't going to last. You know, it's not rainbows and butterflies every day. I don't like him sometimes. You're not going to like your husband sometimes. You're not going to like your wife sometimes. You know, but that doesn't mean the love's not there. Exactly. You know, people are like, like they're supposed to be happy every day. I'm like, (laughs) I I wasn't happy when I woke up this morning. (laughs) What? You know, we're human beings. We have, we, you know, we, you know, and I truly believe that we really are conflict is yeah. meant for us to grow and get closer. You know, it truly is. If I, I met a couple one time that says we never argue. And I just looked at them like, mm-hmm. you gotta be kidding me. It, oh no, we're very, very happily married and, and, and we never ever argue. And the question is, what are you doing in my office? <laughs> well, we're bored. Well, if you're bored, you're boring. Yep. You know, um, if, if there's no, no growth in there, no conflict, no resolution, no nothing, then, then your relationship is dead. Is that what they really want out there? Is a dead relationship? I don't know. You know, there is no such thing as rainbows and butterflies. No, no, not not in a relationship. What there is is love. Yeah, absolute yeah. love. Yeah, and I think a lot of people they don't really know who they are. Just mm-hmm. as a person. yeah, because I, I I'm close to um this one woman in particular. I've known mm-hmm. her for what I don't know what twelve years now. Mm-hmm. She don't really know who she is, you know, and um I. You know, every once in a while, I I say little things. She doesn't, she don't get it. It kind of goes over her head. She's like, you know, I, I just, I just, I don't want to do that. I just want to do whatever I'm doing. And um, she doesn't even understand why I like being around her. She she thinks that uh, like she's just a regular old woman. That's it. It's, 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 it's like. Uh, it's kind of weird. I think a lot of people are like that. They don't really know who they are and, and what they're capable of. They just, ah, oh, you know, I'm just, I'm just another person, you know. Mm. Well, what I am is a carry. Huh? You know, what I am is a carry. I'm carry. I'm just me. You know, and um, you know, uh, I, my belief is that I'm a diamond. And there are many, many facets and many, many places that my mind can go because I was, you know, I'm a human being and all human beings are diamonds. And they all have different talents and gifts and and different facets of who they are, but they're all diamonds. Everyone, you, me, everyone is a diamond. And, and I, I, all of all of that is is special and i'm not sure what happens to people where they believe they're vanilla flavored because there's no vanilla flavored human being they don't exist no. you know um i've heard people say well i don't have any gifts or talents oh yes everybody does yeah. everybody does there is no thing we're all absolutely unique yeah i agree 100 percent. you know so who's your uh i guess ideal uh client in, in a perfect world is it couples singles <laughs> or, or well, it could be uh um, a veteran <laughs> see, well i help veterans free of charge so that has nothing to you know it doesn't matter if they're single in relationships or couples um veterans are not charged by me um but um for outside of that uh, i love 
I love couples. I really do. And it doesn't matter what kind of couple, actually. You know, um, if you're in a long-term relationship, that's kind of my qualifier. And um, I especially really, really enjoy couples who feel like um, everything's dead in their relationship. And I love to bring them down the path of reignition and reconnection. You know, mm -hmm. um, I love to bring them down the path of how did you get here and where did you come from? And it is amazing. The results are amazing to watch them fall in love all over again. Mm. That's nice. You know, so what I can imagine people come to you for all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> you know from the uh you know maybe the relationship is is is, is dead you know or mm -hmm. no connection or uh you know I, I can only imagine you know but who who do you um i guess what couple um do you really like working with Oh, wow. well, I really love it when I have couples who have been together for a long time and they, um, their children are grown and gone and they're sitting in front of me and saying, who is this person and why am I married to them? You know, um, they've spent a life of doing what I call reporting instead of communicating, you know, taking care of the kids, doing the job, doing the house, doing the, all this stuff, getting all of these things accomplished that they need to accomplish. And when the kids are grown and gone, they don't know each other anymore. And my favorite thing to do is to bring them back to where they were when they started. That's great. Now we, we need more people like you out there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, if people want to work with you, uh, where would they go to? Highestintentcoach.com. And um, if you go there, there's a PDF in there that you can sign up for that's free of charge. And it's called 50 Things Couples Can Do for Fun. So, you know, you want a little bit more excitement, a little bit, a little more joy, you can sign up for that. Um, it's, uh, some things are a little racy, but not too racy, but a little racy, you know, but it, it's, it's a great PDF to have. There you have it. Like, share this episode. All links will be found in the show notes. Until next time, we're out. Peace. If you like this video, share this video. And if you want to support my channel, click the thanks tab and leave me a donation. Two, five, ten.